A new day is dawning in India, built on the bricks of boundless possibilities. Connected across the farthest corners, where future-forward technologies are addressing our most critical development needs. Where the power to steer our dreams lies in the palm of our very own hands. This is a glimpse of India's future, for here lies its most valuable capital. In each eager face, it's tomorrow's leader, path breaker, vision maker, reflecting the country's greatest ambitions. Now, India's technological agencies are coming together to ensure that these ambitions are realized through the vehicle of e-education. It's a satellite-driven, web-enabled, 21st century solution to country's most crucial education needs. 2004, an auspicious liftoff for the Indian Space Research Organization's EDUSAT, India's first satellite dedicated to distance education. Partnered by the Indian Ministry of Human Resource Development and other stakeholders from the public and NGO sectors, the EDUSAT hopes to set up at least 25 to 30 uplink centers across the country. Each uplink center will reach 5,000 remote centers. The satellite network also allows India to extend its tele-education reach across 53 nations in Africa. Under the Pan-African e-Network Initiative, seven Indian universities will provide five African university centers with uplinked interactive lectures for various fields of study. These five centers will further uplink across 53 remote learning centers using VSAT technology. The satellite creates an interactive network for the e-education process by connecting its teaching end and classroom end. It is connecting India's best educators with students who need it the most nationally and globally. While ISRO provides the satellite technology, New Delhi's data center becomes the main hub for the Pan-African e-network. The TCIL is the nodal agency from where lessons are conveyed to the African Union's hub in Senegal. When it comes to designing the lessons, that task is in the able hands of agencies like the UGC, Victor and the Indira Gandhi National Open University or IGNU. These agencies maintain teaching ends or terminals that create and uplink e-lessons to the satellite. The technology is set up for both one-way broadcasts as well as two-way. This means students from anywhere in the country can have real-time interaction with top quality educators. The coverage of e-education is vast and far-reaching. E-learning has provided a huge platform and India has really set an example in this direction because we have been able to target students who are there in the far-flung areas and terrains where one could have never imagined that there could ever be, you know, we would have ever been able to reach or provide education to such students. But that has become possible today. And we are doing it, you know, through the medium of e-learning. E-learning is a process whereby we've been able to evolve user-friendly templates so that the students can themselves access all this. They navigate from one page to the other, from one concept to the other. There's online testing, there are quizzes, there are questions that they can attempt. So it has equipped them and given them a lot of power. Lessons cover primary, senior secondary and higher education. There are special modules for technical and teacher training, as well as soft skills training. Of special note are modules designed exclusively for Indian Army soldiers which are broadcast to army camps at several locations. As these lessons are uplinked in India and overseas, class is now in session. 
If e-education is able to create open virtual classrooms, it is only because Indian state government and non-profit agencies like Utkarsh in Haryana are working tirelessly on the ground. Across the nation, these agencies are injecting fresh hope into the community by setting up classroom and terminals where they are most crucially required. Two years into the project, these efforts are beginning to bear fruit. My name is Mamta. I live in Chika Gaam, which is a small town in Haryana. My mother and father didn't have so much that they could study in a private school. My admission to UIT is now in the UIT. I give my education to the whole Educet. If Educet is not in our school, then maybe my admission can't be here. After B.Tech, I want to become a professional engineer. I want to become a professional engineer. Across borders, there are others whose dreams have now become a reality as information and communication technology touches millions of young lives. It is nurturing the future. Tomorrow's doctors, scientists, lawyers, artists and achievers. E-education has sown the seeds. Time now to watch them grow.